Hi, how are you guys doing today? Uh, today we're going to be doing the focal point technique. This is a technique that I created to draw the eye. We have Patrick here, and this is six and a half weeks of grow up. Now, his front is longer than it is in the back. Part of that is, uh, we call it the focal point. The focal point, when you cut to the round of the head, you end up getting a big mass of hair. So I have a tri little triangle of cones that I'd like to show you. So what we have here is we have the eye, and then as you see, there's all this open space. See how much space is in there. So your eyes will move all the way around here, and you'll actually end up avoiding eye contact. The goal is to close this triangle so it brings more focus into the eyes by not having a diversion in the back. And a lot of people are afraid of growth patterns. Don't be afraid of growth patterns, brace them. And with the Nape Razor, I'm gonna show you how to tame these guys. So let's rock and roll. Okay, so now the focal point technique, I created this because out of necessity. I like seeing my clients. I like seeing my clients frequently. But I don't want to see my clients every two weeks. I started getting the same exact complaints about my work. And it's not like I'm charging $5 for a haircut. You know, when you're charging a premium rate for your work, you got to have a premium product. So I started troubleshooting the problems I was having. And cutting to the round of the head was the main problem that I was, that I was seeing. Because you'd have this big bush back here, which would dry, draw the eyes over the front of the head. So I started just uh, cutting without fear. I started creating, you know, to say, okay, well, I'm going to take this hair whirl in the back that normally people are afraid of, and I'm just going to cut it off. Now, how am I going to beat that growth pattern in the submission? And that's where the feather light razor comes in, which I'll be showing you shortly after I do the basic cut. Okay, so in the back, you want to connect. The perimeter. Now, as you see, my finger angle is going upwards. I'm creating a mohawk. Just doing a little trim. Voila. So then we have our establishment. Longer, shorter. This will blend in with the whirl and its growth patterns in the back. So now I'm going to start. Just doing my little section of my book my video. And if you take one thing away from this video you're watching right now, it's about forward thinking. How we can be better, how we can be better artists for our clients. And this is a beautiful way because as you saw in the before photos, that was a six and a half week grow up. Six and a half weeks, that's pretty darn good. Especially when your normal haircut might be out of shape within a month, three weeks. Especially when you just use texturizing shoes. I'm not slamming people for using texturizing shoes. You do you, but you have to trust the fact that you can get a better blend. You can get better work and you can get better distance and give your clients the value they deserve. Because what are we without our clients? You know, and we're just uh, starving artists and the world has enough starving artists. We don't want to be that. The reason that I use, well, once I get into the nape blade, I'll explain to you why I use it in that manner. You know, and then take a little point up right there. And now I'm going to cross check just right quick. And you're getting the basic shape into the hair with your shears before you start using the feather, the nape feather razor. And just the basics of weight too is it's uh, it's pretty amazing you know 
um, get into how weight can get affected just by leaving length here, taking length there. It's It makes our job a lot more fun. So now I'm going to start with the feather, Nate Grazer. I'm using a little bit of blade glide. This stuff is amazing because it gives you really good slippage. You don't want to go into the hair when it's dry, which is one of the reasons why I don't use or one of the main reasons why I don't use other razors. Like the Plier razor is amazing for long hair, and if you use the Erojo technique, the regular hair cutting razor, the guard is just kind of, it's too much in the way. Where with this razor, you have this micro guard that protects your client, protects your skin. You're not going to cut your client, which is a beautiful thing because we don't want to cut our clients. Now, see back in here, you have the hair wall. You see the strength of this growth pattern. That's where you can start getting in and drawing. Now, you can't get into the hair using the cutting razor the way you can with this because it's so small. It's almost like a pencil. And now... As we've got around the parietal ridge, this is where we would see this growth pattern issue. You start getting this halo if you do texturizing shoes. Essentially what you're doing is think of the comb. Oh, actually, I'll pull these out. You have the comb. You're just cutting these hairs, but you're leaving hair behind after you close your blades. Now, this is the hair that's left behind. This is the hair that's cut. As the hair grows out, it starts giving lift, which is the basis of weight around the parietal ridge. Now, by using this tool, you're removing the hair right from the scalp. So, instead of having the hair that was cut by the texturizing shears, you take that out, the hair falls in, and you get more distance out of it. Just by removing that weight. It's an amazing thing. I was just messing around with it, and I started drawing on myself and realizing I wasn't going to cut myself. Then I started using it on my clients, and an amazing thing happened. I started seeing my clients come in less, and a lot of people are like, well, that's terrible. No, it's a good thing, because when you give more distance out of your work, people will tell their friends their friends will tell their friends. Then all of a sudden, you don't even know what to do with yourself because you have clients coming in that want this. They see this. They see the grow out. They're out there walking around, and it becomes just almost another type of a branding. You know, giving the distance, giving better work, and that's what we're all here for. You know, I mean, anyone can do a haircut, or not anyone, but people can do a haircut that, oh, yeah, it looks great in a week. We want our work to look good from the time that they're in our chair to the time they come back. And what better way to advertise your work and your skill in your art than by doing this? Now, as you see, this is all that I'm taking. I'm not taking a lot of hair off. not cutting it, I'm not pulling the hair, I'm not tugging it, and look at how beautifully this is falling down now, just by drawing into the strength of this roll, instead of leaving it long and creating just a big blob of hair in the back, we're just getting rid of it and making it bend to our will. And it's, that's the beautiful thing about being an artist, guys. So, now, we're nice and uh, tuned up around the perimeter, around his parietal ridge. We have his hair whirl in check now. So now, because Patrick's got this amazing texture here, I can really go nuts with this, with this uh, razor. So, I'm going to do a little bit of sectioning, and I'm just going to start chopping out some hair. What does that do? It creates more texture. You can point cut it. You can do whatever you want to but to me, this is the best way because you're really in there. You really feel like you're drawing into this hair. 
And by drawing, you're you're being a working artist, guys. And it's an amazing thing. I'm also going to show you how to create lift in the front that is going to create more of a focal point in the very front of the hair. So you don't want to go too nuts, but you know, you want to just get enough separation in there. So if he wears it natural, it's great. If he wears it with product, then it's even better. Okay, so now we have this over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rock my comb back. Pull this over here. And now I'm going to take the flat of the blade. I'm just going to kind of drag it. And now we're going the exact opposite of around the parietal. Remember when I was talking about removing that length? We want to create shorter pockets to create lift. We want there to be shorter hair because it's going to hold the longer hair up, which means the styleability is going to be there much longer just by doing this simple little project. Simple little project. Man. So now we're just rubbing with the flat of the blade. You know, you're definitely, it's a, I love this, this razor just because of the safety factor. It does such amazing work and I never worry about even cutting myself where, you know, like I love the plie razor, I love the texture and the movement and that you get out of it. But you gotta be careful, you can cut yourself. So, so you always have to be careful with that. All right. Now, this is where we're at. This haircut is done. Now I wanna show you something really quick. To say using the same three combs that I used before, it's not magic, where before it was a wide open triangle like that. So now the triangle is much smaller. You see? So now there's less space. Instead of this, you have this now. That is going to allow more eye contact. And part of the reason we have to have eye contact is we have to deal with one another in the society. So eye contact is a good thing. But when you have, when you're looking at someone and making eye contact, they have this bush of hair in the back. So like back here, you're gonna be paying attention to this. You're not gonna be looking at the eyes. And especially when you have people with work, that work with the public, it's a, it's a really good technique for you guys to try. So uh, thank you very much. I'm gonna dry him up and you're gonna get some after photos. Okay, so uh, this is, this is uh, when I show you the dry hair, okay? This has zero product. And you see how he has this lift, how he has this volume with nothing in his hair. So you see the nice focal point too. Your eyes are not drawn back here. The eyes are right in here. This is the focal point technique. This is the outcome. When do you use this technique? We use it on every head that walks in our shop. The reason why, we like the longevity. If you're just approaching this, of course, you know, you're going to have to integrate this in your whole repertoire at, at your own leisure. But I'm telling you guys, this is one of the best ways that I've seen to get distance out of a cut. And using the nape razor is something different. When our clients see it for the first time, they, they're blown away by it. So just trust me on this and don't be too forceful. Work on it. And have fun with it. Now I'm going to apply some product to his hair so you can see the difference. A little bit of product is always a good thing. Because it creates this great separation and you get hold. Where? Now he's going out in the world and doesn't have to worry about nothing. No revisiting the mirror. No coming back every two weeks. And he gets to enjoy his hair for as long as he wants to. I've seen clients come in after two months, eight weeks of grow out, it still looks great. So try it, okay? You might like it. Thank you very much.